Hi, in this series I'm going to talk about Hydro Tasmania and the different schemes around the state. But let's start at the very beginning. I'm in Launceston on the Cataract Gorge and below me is the Duck Reach Power Station. It was the first major power station in Tasmania. It was commissioned by the Launceston Council and it also was one of the first power stations in the city, Australia and even the world to light the electric street lights. Let's go down and have a look. Today there's a flood forecast for the river and the basin, which means we should be in for a, a good amount of flow down here in the Cataract Gorge today. So let's go down the track and explore the historic Duck Reach power station. You can see a significant flow coming down the Cataract Gorge today, and that means that the Trevallon Dam is overspilling. Whilst some smaller hydro systems did operate in Australia, this was the first one to be publicly owned. The idea came out of Niagara Falls and its hydro plants that had been built a couple of years earlier. So they thought they'll take that idea and put it here into Launceston. So the city council started the project in 1892 and completed it in 1895. Because the power station is built on the other side of the river, the access is pretty poor. So they needed to develop ideas to get people across. Up above me, they built a trolleyway, an aerial trolleyway or a flying fox, as many people might call it. This suspension bridge was also added to give access to the site. In 1929, there was a very large flood here in Launceston, and this bridge was washed out, taking with it the pier on the other end. So whilst this side, we have a lovely stone pier, on the other side, it's replaced with one just made of concrete. You can see up there on the hill, the penstocks, which is the name for pipes that come downhill in a hydro scheme, come right out of the middle of the hill. In 1892, they constructed a tunnel that went right through there to a point on the river upstream, quite a distance up higher. You see the rapids here on the river, where the water came in was much higher than it is now. So it would flow through that tunnel out down the penstocks and through the power station. Here you can see the haulage system still intact today. This flying fox is how they brought in all the materials to build the power station and then to operate it in the future. You can see on the other side where the trolley system or flying fox started. It came down here and inside this shed, the original workings are all still in here. You can see it anchored right into the rock. It's pretty amazing that that's still here. This is the exit to the tunnel that they bored to the upper reaches of the river at a place called Dead Man's Hollow. They tunneled this tunnel from both ends. It's almost a kilometer in length. When the water comes rushing out of there, it came out at 5,500 liters per second. It was screened in this grate. Any excess went down this overflow you know, a kind of spillway. It went in and it was diverted into two sections. The original system had one penstock that ran down the hill here. When they expanded the power station, they added a second penstock that runs down there. Across there on the top of the hill, you can see the buildings where they lived when they're building and working on the system. The power station's just below. Once the water descends down the hill, down these penstocks or pipes, it enters the power station and it spins a wheel. That's what generates the electricity. You can see here where the penstock takes a big bend. It increases the slope down the hill and thus the speed of the water as it enters the power station before it hits the turbines. Once it's hit the turbines, it's transferred to a generator. The electricity is then of course sent through wires to the city. Now we're inside the power station and you can see some of the original workings here, although most have been removed. 
This photograph up here shows you what the power station looked like before the flood. It was almost completely rebuilt after the 1929 flood. You can see up there on the wall, that's where the penstocks were divided up into separate penstocks and ran several turbines at once. In this photograph, you can see what it looked like when all the turbines were in here and the station was operational. This power station here at Dark Reach worked all the way up until 1950s. In the 1950s, a decision was made to put a dam above the power station, up where the original pipeline came in. The Trevallon Dam was built to A, mitigate flood, so that 1929 didn't happen again. They also diverted the water down through another penstock below where the city is. So the water exits onto the Tamer River through a new power station, the Trevallon Power Station. This would effectively bypass most of the water out of the gorge and keep Launceston safe from major flooding. Again, in this photograph, you can see the extent of the damage that happened in the 1929 flood. And down here below, you can see the extent of the flooding that happened in Launceston. I remember we had a piano at home that had been salvaged from the 1929 flood. It had floated down the main street of Invermay. This bridge actually swings quite a bit. In Launceston, we call these bridges swinging bridges, more than we call them suspension bridges. It's sort of a rite of passage to swing the bridge when you're walking across with the younger brother and sister and scare the crap out of them. I'm at Trevallon Power Station. Trevallon Power Station was built in 1955. It uh, replaced the Duck Reach Power Station up there in the Cataract Gorge. The reason for this was that the Launceston City used to flood quite regularly and quite severely in 1929. It was quite damaged. So the idea of Trevallon Power Station was to divert the water from a dam called Trevallon Dam above Duck Reach Power Station. The water comes racing down the hill in tunnels through this power station, effectively bypassing the city. It enters into the Tamer River behind me here, where it enters below the city. So effectively, it's a flood mitigation or bypass system. This is a Pelton wheel. It's what powers the power stations. The water flows down the penstocks at high speed, hits those buckets, turns the generator, which in turn generates the electricity. You can see here, the water's bubbling away into what's known as a tail race. It comes out of the power station, into this tail race, and out to the lower part or the estuary part of the Tamer River, thus protecting lots of them from floods. You can see here, Hydro Tasmania killed two birds with one stone. They got to generate green energy and they stopped the city from flooding. Well, I do hope you enjoyed this first episode of Hydro Schemes of Tasmania. Please stay tuned, there will be more episodes to come. Don't forget to like and subscribe my channel and share if you enjoyed this video.